All right, guys, uh, we're going to begin our discussion on what we call significant figures or often just referred to as sig figs for short. All right, so we use sig figs. That's our method of rounding answers to account for degree of uncertainty in our measurements. So I want to make an example for you just to kind of uh, set us on the right path here. So let's say I step on a digital scale and weigh in at 185 pounds, all right? I step off the scale, I eat a four ounce candy bar, step back on the scale and still weigh 185 pounds. All right. Now, according to that scale, that's great. That means I can eat as many candy bars as I want and I won't gain any weight. Right. Now, obviously, that really comes down to a precision question. Okay. How precise is that measurement? Now, if my scale only measures down to the ones place, what it does is it has a built in algorithm to round to 185. So if I'm actually 184.5 through 185.4, it's going to round both of those to 185. So when I step on the scale, it says 185. That means I'm somewhere in that range. All right. Most scales that are like, like at home that you have, they're usually just going to go to that that one's place is because they're assuming you want a ballpark figure of what you actually weigh. All right. Uh, so we got to keep that in mind. So the only certain I'm really the digit I'm certain of there is uh, those three, the 100, the 800 and the five. But I don't that's that five is actually rounded. So I'm somewhere in this range here. OK, uh, and this will this will come back into play in just a minute. But I kind of wanted to give you a scope for understanding why we use significant figures to reflect how accurate that is, right? So I wouldn't report my weight to somebody as 185.0 because I don't really know that digit unless the scale tells me that digit. All right? Now, um, so the instruments we use are only accurate, precise to a certain degree depending on the instrument. Okay? Therefore, the numbers we report need, so reported numbers need to reflect our degree of certainty in our measurements. Right? If we try to re reflect digits that we're not certain of, uh, technically we're lying. We're telling that whoever's reading our work that we knew those digits and we actually didn't. All right? Um, but good thing is there's rules. Rules we can follow when we want to round to account for various degrees of certainty. And those are called significant figures. I'm going to tell you first how to identify how many significant digits we have uh, when you're given a number. Okay? And those are the first rules I'm going to show you. All right, so rule number one, zeros at the beginning of a number are never significant. Okay, zeros at the beginning are never significant. So if we take a look at the number example given here, I have one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six zeros there. None of those are actually sig figs. Okay, in this case, I have two significant figures, the four and the five. It's just a reminder here uh, that if it's not a zero, it's going to be significant every single time. Zeros are only sometimes significant, all right? So if the zeros are at the beginning, it's not significant. Rule two, zeros at the end of the number are not significant unless, this is an exception to this one, there's a decimal, in which case they are significant, okay? So... There's a decimal, that means we count those zeros. So, as talking about the end of the number, keep in mind, right? So, 130, that zero comes at the end of the number. It is not significant, okay, because there's no decimal. Now, if I report my number is 130.0, what I'm telling you is I actually know that's a zero, and I know that's a zero, or at least that rounds to a zero, okay? That is increasing my significance there. So rather than having just two sig figs, all four of them are. Right? This sounds a little weird right now. I know you'll get better at remembering these rules with practice. Practice, practice. Okay? So rule one, if they're at the beginning of a number, they are not significant. Rule two, if they're at the end of the number, they're only significant if they accompany a decimal. All right? Rule three. Okay, zeros between two non-zero numbers are always significant. So in the case of 10,010 10 here, those two zeros are significant, right? Because they come between the one and the one. So those are significant. 
That one, on the other hand, is not because it comes at the end and there's no decimal. Right? Now, if I go to the second number, oops, sorry about that. I'm going to have to plug in here. I'm going to pause. All right. And if we take a look at this number, we have the, the decimal accompanying those two zeros. That makes those significant and those significant because they're between the two non-zero digits. So all the zeros are significant here. Whereas here, just remember, only those two count because that one's at the end and there's no decimal with it. All right. And rule four, if it's not zero, always significant. Okay, so let's put this into practice with some more examples. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a list of numbers, and I want you to identify the number of sig figs in each of the following. So first example, 3,120. I want you to look back at your rules, right, that you've already written down, and let's take a look at this. The three, the one, and the two. Those are non-zero, so they are significant. So really, we have to determine, is that zero right there significant or not? It comes at the end of the number, but it does not accompany a decimal. So in this case, we have three sig figs, the three, the one, and the two, not the zero. All right. Next example, we have a similar number in value, but notice this decimal right here. So again, we have the three, the one, the two, of course, are significant. In this case, are the zero significant? They come at the end of the number, and there is a decimal. So we also count those, four, five, six. So that gives me six sig figs. Next, point zero two four zero. so our rules. Zero is at the beginning of a number, never significant. Those two do not count. Zero is at the end. Is there a decimal place? Yes, there is. So all three of those count, three, sorry, three. 1.0240. So we have a zero here and a zero here, right? Are those two zeros significant or just one of them? So keep in mind, we got one, two, three. We know count right away because they're not zero. This zero comes between two non-zero digits, so that makes that zero significant. This zero comes at the end. There is a decimal place, also significant. So we should have one, two, three, four, five sig figs there. All right, now scientific notation. It's good to know how to do this, right? The 10 to the 23rd, that's just a bunch of zeros, right? Or decimal places we move. So we just look at the number preceding that. We have the six and the two, of course, count. The zero also counts because it's between the six and the two. So this would be three sig figs. All right. Now, uh, how do we round? If we only want to report a certain number of sig figs, okay, let's say three, and we've got a number that has a lot more than three sig figs, that means we go back and we round it to the first three significant figures. All right. So. 427,000 million, excuse me, 452,134. That has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine sig figs, right? How many do we want? Three. So I'm going to start from the left. I'm going to keep the four and the two and the seven. I'm going to keep those three digits. Now, what I have to do, though, with this last one, so I know I'm going to keep the four and the two, I have to decide whether that seven rounds up or down. So, of course, you need to go to that next number there. And that tells me it's less than five, so I'm going to round that seven down to seven, right? Now, I don't just get to stop there, right? 427 is nowhere near the same number as 427 million, right? I'm rounding this, which means it's going to be relatively close based on how many sig figs I have. So the rest of my numbers become insignificant zeros. That's how I do that. So again, I want three sig figs in my answer, right? I'm gonna take my first three digits that count. I'm gonna round the last one based on the number that comes after it. So that comes out to 427 million. Three sig figs, those zeros, they're placeholders, but they're not significant. All right, so I have this number. It's a really ugly number. Sometimes you do a division problem and you get a really nasty long number like this. We want three sig figs. So again, I'm going to go to my first three numbers. One, two, three. 
right? So I'm going to keep the 1, I'm going to keep the 3. The 4 needs to be rounded based on what comes after it. So the 9 tells me I should round that up. So I'm going to round my number to 135. I'm not going to put a decimal or anything because I only want to show three sig figs in this, hand, in this question. 10. Now, here, 10 only has one sig fig. I want to round it to 3. Okay, so how could I change the number 10 to include three sig figs instead of just one? Right? So what we need to do is we need to make some zeros become significant. So our zeros will come at the end of the number, right? How do we make zeros at the end of the number become significant? We add a decimal place. So I'm going to change my 10 to three sig figs. I'm going to go say 10 point zero, right? Now I have made this zero significant and the next zero significant uh, by adding that decimal place there. Okay, 42,080,000. Now, what we have to do here is we have to keep those that four and the two. We know those aren't going to change. My third digit comes into play right here with that zero. All right. Now, that zero is significant because it comes between two non-zero numbers. So I'm going to round that zero based on the number that comes after it, which is eight. If it's eight, that means we round up. So I'm going to make this 42 million 100,000. Okay, so again, that's my third significant digit. That's the one I'm going to round because I only want three in my answer, and I always do the first three. Now, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, right? So keep in mind, these are zeros at the beginning of the, num at the, beginning of the number. None of them are significant. So I don't have to worry about yet. What, now, here's my first three, my three, four, five, right? So I'm going to keep my zeros there as placeholders, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3, 4. Now I have to add my third sig fig here, so I'm going to round my five based on that seven. Seven tells me to round up six. I'm going to stop right there. The rest of those digits don't go in because if I add zeros, that means I'm adding sig figs because there's zeros at the end of a decimal. All right. Now, I know this can be a little confusing. It just takes practice. It's kind of a different way of looking at numbers. Follow your rules and work your way through that chem quest. Okay. Uh, so, what I'm going to have you guys do in class uh, is chem quest number three. You'll be getting that from me shortly. Uh, you're going to do the first three sections up through number six. All right. I think that's enough to be getting on with. Um, then we'll talk about how to use uh, your calculation numbers to figure out how many sig figs you have. But we just have to get good at identifying or recognizing sig figs when we see them first. All right. Uh, so that is this installment.